my, my, my son is up at Sears Point racing the long car, so I must have been driving around a lot this morning. And it in this morning. Anyway, I'm glad to be here. So where was your question? I'm supposed to answer. Now we're supposed to say a few kind words about each of us. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll talk about it. Only I'll talk about it. How about yourself? No, no, I look great. No, uh, yeah, I, I would know really the guy. I mean, it was uh, at Ampex. Uh, Nolan wasn't the best engineer, but he was good. He was bright, but he sure liked to invest in things and be an entrepreneur and businessman, which was really incredible. And Steve and I came up, we all, all, all of us came out of Berkeley, which was more interested in, you know, politics at that time. It was a very, very tense time in America with the Vietnam War going on the draft. So, a lot of us, uh, the Ampex was a healthy alternative to uh, fighting the jungle, getting shot. So uh, that was part of the motivation. But Nolan had this crazy idea. It really was kind of a crazy idea at the time, but it was like fun. And, and he just was a spark plug. He was the guy who believed it was going to be the biggest thing. And I, uh, I surely didn't. I thought it would be fun. And that was the one thing we all had in common. And uh, damn if it didn't work. First, I need to correct some misconceptions. Bob was the first really, really successful video, coin operated video game. But actually, the first commercially successful one was the one that Nolan sort of started in his back lot for computer space at uh, Ampex and uh, had it built at the Nutting Associates. And you can see running on, you really watch close on. Um, Soylent Green. It's a video great game up in the apartment in the nice uh, towers, the uh, uh, computer space. Um, second, I was not the first VP of engineering in Atari. I believe uh, Al may have that title. Um, a gentleman named Lloyd Warman had it at one point, bringing back the name. And I had it after that. Yeah, no, so I got it from Al. You were the first, I might have been the first real one, but at the time, no one never trusted me enough to do that. So I was the senior staff engineer. <laughs> he was the VP of engineering. So I was the staff engineer. Well, yeah, and she did. Also, to add to Ampex, which really was a uh, amazing place, a common route besides Berkeley. Besides being the first on, uh, on the audio recording in the U.S. with tape and the videotape, um, we all remember they were the first. They invented the uh, disc recording of video. Right. So I got one of these at home. Right. You know, it's a disc about this size, about a quarter inch thick, right. plated with 18 layers of miracle metals that they used to do the first uh, NFL football instant replay. Right. And uh, Ampex also had the enviable spot of um, be having the chance to go in the next format to tape recording business with Sony and said, yeah, you can have it. Which ranks right up there with Nolan's decision of when Steve Jobs said, I'm going to make a home computer. Do you want to invest $20,000 or whatever it was that I had with Apple? Which may have been the right decision at the time, but you can just never make all the right decisions. I thought it was a bad idea. But it was fun. I mean, the nurse liked it, but we didn't get anything close to like it. Al was given an opportunity to have some of the funding stock of That's not a big story. Of Apple. Or uh, to buy, uh, to get an Apple One computer at that time? Or to Apple get Two. No, I mean, what happened was, was uh, that the Steve Jobs was working at, 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 at Apple. And, and, uh, and he was I mean, old for you. <laughs> Actually, first for, for me and Don Lane, and uh, then he then uh, then he left off to be his guru and whatnot, and came back. And then Waz by this time to go to the Apple II, and it's really cute and showed it off. And uh, they wanted to form this company. We had passed on, but I helped him with the parts and one part of the of my telescope. Uh, interest in Don Valentine, a capitalist. Up well for him. And Steve said, would you like some uh, stock? And I said, ah, that company's going to we all take a free computer, but the free computer is not going to be a One of the misconceptions that we really wanted to start a company, what we really wanted to do was bought out by Eagle Valley or Disney. 
And they, and they kept saying no, even to us, and uh, so that's how we ended up with the company. Yeah. One interesting thing about the uh, jobs connection, if you remember, is where you had a little game that we, no one had an idea, and there just wasn't the resources for it called Breakout, or it turned into Breakout. So there was a little contract that uh, Steve Jobs brokered for uh, him and his good old smart buddies, you know, I asked to work on them. So the contract had a certain price, and that was what I was uh, running that part of things. And, um, so we signed the contract, and Steve would open the door at night for uh, Wozniak to come in and actually do the actual work. And uh, Steve Wozniak delivered a, a design for the first prototype of Breakout. When the design was completed, it had, it, it, you know, people, people continued on with it, but it, it uh, turned into breakout. So we paid on the contract, and Atari paid um, ten thousand. I think it was ten thousand dollars for the design. It was a thousand bucks a chip. Everything was right. And lots had been. Well, that's thirty-five it's chips. Ridiculous. Of course, no one didn't say. You had to be able to buy the chips. The couple of chips were LED displays, the only little pack of made in chips. And so, uh, you know, it was done. We appreciate the game, go the rules. So, uh, uh, Steve, uh, then it comes out in jobs. 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 Wait a minute, I'm going to finish at least the point which was then when it was over, Steve, was, Steve Jobs paid Steve Wozniak his 50% of this more than $10,000 number of 2500 bucks. <laughs> That was the start of the relationship. <laughs> it was written into the contract, right? That um, it, it was a certain amount of money for a certain design, uh, and then a bonus for every chip that you could eliminate from the design. Yeah. Right? And what, I mean, what was the expectation that it would be delivered on X number of chips? I don't know. I think it was what they were averaging 60 to 100 oh, chips. As I recall, but the number was 50.
the joystick center in a big elastomeric building type thing. And then uh, one of the consumer guys, Hugh? I remember Hugh's last name. Yeah, Hugh. Yeah. Um, did the uh, actual mechanics and the, you know, was the one who found the dome switches and, you know, basically did the mechanical work of the consumer joystick. I have a significant number of designs of joysticks. We had uh, some really great people trying to reinvent the joysticks so we had one where you would hold in your hand in the snow base right? So what would happen is if you want to go faster, you kept pushing, pushing, pushing until you fell over. Yeah. <laughs> so we had all these bodies that go over. Yeah. Right. I remember Gotcha, too. I remember Gotcha. The memory looking well, uh, double organs. Yeah, they, they, they should that way. <laughs> Santa Clara, 
and, uh, and it has a little picture of a go board on the side. And uh, anyway, we, the next and second choice of the name was Atari, which is a, a, a go term. Go and play go a lot. And uh, so I was too cheap to throw the cards out or too uh, I throw things out. So I found a whole box of cards. So they're still there. Being a real cheap paper, so I got a lot of boxes, about like a thousand of them. Good deal. I'll tell you one of the other things that I think you might enjoy was the, by May, the, uh, uh, I, I forgot to bring it, I got brought up last year, the memo from Nolan to engineering about all these products. And number five on the list was a home version of Palm. Uh, and, and I was, we were warring with each other because Nolan was just running the company full speed. And so we had this list of six things, a 20 player gotcha, a home version of Palm, uh, you know, I want to have engineers off on the side where you do any projects I just dream up on an instant. And so the fact that we have no manufacturing capacity is not to be used as a reason not to do this. So I sent a memo back to Nolan on Syzygy Company letterhead because we, we had it, we paid for it, so we used it internally, um, that said to Nolan from engineering is the fact that we have no money now, a reason not to do any of these things. And he wrote back on it, no, big letters, and said, it's okay. So we went off, and that's how the consumer pump project I started, to see how far I could take it before I ran out of the money. I hope you died. The fact that no money was a great motivator, too. We actually had multiple companies, so the notorious could be at the same time. Yeah. 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 Part of it may have been the creditors, but the other part was historically, in the distribution channel, was there was three distributors in San Francisco. One guy had as his anchor, like a shopping mall. He had the Gottlieb pinball machines. Another guy had the Valley pinball machines. Another guy had like the you know, Williams pinball machines. And, that's, and they all wanted exclusives. So the, our best deal at the time was, you know, you could sell to one guy, but the other, you know, two thirds of the market couldn't have it. So basically, he gained that set up to be a, a kind of a competitor that the distribution didn't know about. So that. Uh, um, if there was an Atari game like um, oh, Grand Track, Grand Track, the driver game, he gained all the this guy quit Atari and he went over and he stole it and we were going to sue those guys. The distributors love it. He games had a product and amazingly, Atari if they had that. half a brain, I, I, the thing that never came out of the strange was the circuit boards were all made in the same factory and had the same part numbers <laughs> and the same, you know, they were identical, but it was a key games part. We're going to sue those guys, yeah. <laughs> and that's who said the MOA show was great. <laughs> and uh, there were some products that came out of the R&D, which is, okay, this is going to be a key product. So like volleyball was a key product. Okay. And then we started doing some on our own, which was, you know, that's how Tank started. But, um, they were all coming out of the same uh, place, and then in the fall of that November of 74, it was announced now that the Key Games had a few hits on its hands, because um, the Key Games version of the drive, dual driving game outsold the Atari version. Atari had professional engineer, industrial designers, who said, well, you know, we need to have so much wit that's so close together, you know, it'll look great. The Key Games guys, we had a, a Super annuated standards. Um, um, mechanical engineer, old guy who was practical, said, Well, but he can't play it that way, so we're going to make the cabinet bigger. Turns out, bigger was better. <laughs> that, uh, what was the key game? Twin Racer. Or, um, I forget the single player's name. But anyway, so Key Games had a few hits under its belt, so then Atari and Key Games had a formally announced merger. <laughs> so we, we, we rejoined together and the right. single production, the single design process um, was to continue to be single and the separate production facility was merged. Well, what happened too was Steve, uh, Steve Bristow took over engineering quite off and I went off and played with the consumer stuff. First of the time, pinball. No, 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 you're right, consumer first, you're right, you're right. Was, um, was Sprint 2 on the yeah, in fact, that was, well, that was just the guy who worked primarily on tank a lot of the rains. That was his, 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 his baby. So it had, at that point, 
key names had a better driving game reputation, which is really strange considering <laughs> they were based on the same group. So that's right out. Yeah. You know, key games became the <laughs> driving game. <laughs> there actually, I'm oh, sorry, Bob, but not, not the drug. There actually is, there's a uh, key game sprint too in, um, on Fishman's Wharf in uh, San Francisco on the, in the museum. And the, it's what it's called. It's all these overall like Nickelodeons and, and <laughs> there was a, uh, we had a lot of problem with copiers, all the other competition and ripping our boards off as fast as we could put them out. We were the advanced research for all the, all the other game companies in America and the world. And uh, so that, uh, so the driving game was the first game we put a, a ROM in, which was a proprietary part. I named it the same as the standard part. And I think the irony was that uh, you know, nobody else could get these parts. All the competition would really stop the competition and work in that sense. But somehow key games had access to the right part too. <laughs> Remarkable that the customer did. The competition was good. Um, Breakout was very successful. Breakout was actually designed um, and first manufactured at the um, when Atari was in Los Gatos. So it had you know, Atari 14600 Winchester Boulevard, Los Gatos, California. Um, the Italian copies became a big problem. And they totally copied the product and were selling the stock out of Europe. At that time, Atari, Atari, Atari didn't they always sold four units. Before so they copied that's right there. Yeah. <laughs> but the funny thing is, they didn't just copy, they improved. Because at the time they copied it, Atari had moved. So that the Italian copy said Atari Inc. 1272 Borregas Avenue, well, Sunnyvale, California, which was the correct correct <laughs> And it turned out, well, we were still making, because it was in the artwork, had the old address. So the only way to tell the Italian copy from the real one was the real one had the old address. <laughs> and they were totally again. You could not tell. There were also, um, when, after, Atari originally ran its Japanese operations uh, by itself, right? Or there was Atari Japan, which was quickly, I think, sold off to Overseas, I'm going to not work. Uh, so, I, was, 
I was at a trade show, point out trade show in Tokyo with a game they shipped for the trade show, and they sent it to me for the, and they thought, well, it must be U.S. power, and I couldn't even get it for run. And about two days in the, in the hotel room, trying to get a run, it finally dawned on me that it was the wrong frequency because they did 50 hertz in Tokyo.
been replaced. They're still, it, but it's not the same building. Oh, no, it lacks the charm of the fire hydrant. See, I've had over 15 years off. I think ICTV is in half that building. Yes. It's a railroad siding there. It's not here for years. Uh, a group of us 
all of them enterprises are starting separate companies. And uh, mine was the Grass Valley group, and we were doing three bright videos here in the Grass Science Engineer Science. Grass Valley Girl, another video game company. Yeah. And it was really that's my technology, and if you got it right, nobody cared any about it. Nolan had already started uh, Sissichi, which was becoming Atari, and Cal had already come up with fun. So uh, I met with, we met with Nolan, and uh, and Alec was the one, and Steve weren't allowed to do too much engineering because they were too busy, you know, competing with uh, this company that had to keep on the production. So we actually started taking over some of the advanced engineering um, projects. And it was also felt that it was really good to get engineering at least 200 miles away from Nolan. Nolan had a very short attention span. So the, the, we were about 10 or 11 people initially, and we went to the Fonds. We did Quadra Farm and uh, volleyball and things like that. We did Gotcha, which was the first game we had. It's really, really good. Maybe you played Gotcha. <laughs> there was uh, two people out through a maze, you know, chasing each other. other. Chasing each other. And the idea was that uh, well, this was known as, you know, the idea that we were going to uh, a man and a woman in the bar and chase yeah. each other. But you could know, I got my eyes. I was kind of managing it as, as best you could do that. And I remember there were some really key things that came out of these not counting. People don't, people don't appreciate. There's a game called Touch Me they came out with that was ripped off and sold, uh, as Simon says, and got a patent by what's his name? I guess. Not there. Actually, once you're done, I'll fill you in. Then. Okay. Well, I'll I'll anyway, anyway, that's an interesting story. But that was because no one said, look, I want to get a video game that's cheaper than a video game, and how do we make it cheaper? No display. Right. And so these guys came up with this, and I wish we had it, the most beautiful prototype I've ever seen out of these guys. It was a box about getting big with four buttons on it, and, and it was something that evolved with this thing, and that was the first touch me. did that. They did the joysticks up there. They did the foot pedal, second rev work, the steering wheel, all that stuff. The driving the game was the driving game itself, but they did, but, but to actually get it, the production, well, the hybrid, I could we won't talk about that. Uh, and so they, they were, it was amazing. I mean, it was classic, because the engineers at, at Atari and Sunnyfield would always hate the research group, and I learned later, that's a classic in any company, so that was okay. So, you know, we had the, we had this kind of a, a neat tension, but it was, it was, we wouldn't have been a company without, I mean, and then there was all this little thing after I got the first, I did the first home call, and these guys went off and did the BCF 2600, which was a, a Remarkable achievement technologically. All the other competition uh, was designing stuff that was dead end and whatnot. So, yeah, I mean, we, I did, we had no, I had no idea again that they would be so productive and they could do remarkable stuff. It was just a magic time where you could take, again, it was about 10 to, it, it grew to about 20 people, yeah, and uh, we could do the 2600 or something. Yes, like that. that was originally uh, four people working for about three months to work the prototype. The first computer controlled uh, pinball machine came out of there. The first computer uh, arcade machine came out of there. But uh, we would only take it to a certain level. Uh, was one of my favorite cartoons was uh, two beavers and that the group they have one that says about the well I didn't actually build it, I had the original concept. <laughs> <laughs> so we had these prototypes there and then what well, was ten people they would uh, be turned over to right. Sunnyvale Engineering to do all the production engineering. Right. But as they all said there's a, 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 a inherent like there was, there was sort of Star Wars followed by the Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, well, Joe DeCour, uh, two days out here, he was an example of somebody that when, when we did the, 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 the Atari BCS, we knew it was going to be a tough chip. So I lined up Shane Meyer, who's the chip. He was really good. Larry Bragger got us from the software, and Joe started up at Grass Valley working on that project, right? We hired uh, uh, something and hang a Grass Valley. And then went back up to work on the 2600. He used sort of like the shuttle right. technical 
I mean, move things back and forth from the research to uh, another object that gets really hard. So we actually have a model which worked well is they would hire people in, in research and they would go with the project. Also, Chuck E. Cheese came out of there. Right. Uh, it's not the pizza, but the caricatures. That touch me thing is there's a follow on site of this. After we did it, the unit at the June, uh, the November 1974 point-off show where in the suite we had first, uh, the first our first electronic pinball, the eight-player drive-in game, which by the way, when marketing tells you you have a double door to load this very large multiplayer game in, you should make sure they understand that it doesn't mean one door here, Later, Milton Bradley did their um, signings, and we said, you know, hey, that's our game. That brings a bell. We're going to build our home game. So we uh, built 750,000 of them. That's a nice number. The consumer one. So the consumer one. Yeah, the consumer one was 750,000. Milton Bradley's lawyers, since they had a patent, sent us a letter saying, we're going to sue your apps. I got that letter and sent them a brochure from the 1974 game. <laughs> we been in production for this amount of time. And amazingly enough, their lawyers, being good stewards of the court, didn't stop suing other people. They just never replied to us. <laughs> this then goes to stage three, which is Nintendo's being sued by Magnavox or some stuff, including like their variation on Simon. Um, or a, no, actually for Quack, the, the gun, the light shooting, the light gun, they're being sued for that, and I end up going to court on that, testifying. And it turns out that uh, the Nintendo lawyers subpoenaed Ralph Bear's notebook. Got it, and there it says, it's in court, so I can say, it, it says, attended Atari coin-up game show. Boy, interesting, I'm paraphrasing. Interesting stuff. A light gun game where you flash the screen and do this. <laughs> and saw a touch me game, sequence of patterns and stuff. And after that, he filed for a patent on that. <laughs> Isn't that right? Because the same very obviously the, the, the reverse happened. They you told them that you saw the Bank of Ops Odyssey game right. at that show and they denied, they both denied, well, it goes to show you a crime page. <laughs> Since this was the first shooting game of Black Man, things like that, we had a big world and you shoot the dog or not. <laughs> and it turns out we, built, we disabled that. The dog could not be shot. <laughs> you could only shoot the dog. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> we were sensitive guys. <laughs> but it was also a game coming out in the 60s. We didn't want to shoot the dog. Uh, when the military asked us to come to do a, a military version of tank for the recruiting offices, uh, we used to be at the company. And this, we had, you know, we were coming right against our 60s Berkeley uh, sensibilities. Uh, uh, the recruiters came and said, because we have this tank game, and they said, we want to have a tank simulator for the recruiting offices. And he said, well, this is just a game. It's not about you know, actually learning how to, to drive the tank. He said, no, you don't understand. We want to have a tank there. So when the 17 year olds came in, and they played the tank, and the sergeant would go over and say, son, how would you like to play the real thing? Oh. And, and so fortunately, we didn't get involved in that. We got the actual here. If you call doing Chuck E. Cheese, we'll have something here. <laughs> Matthews Avenue, 
um, right off De La Cruz and um, as it goes from Coleman and it turns into De La Cruz. Well, close to San Jose Airport. Yeah, it's ended now, but it turns out to be the long-term parking facility entrance to San Jose Airport. And we actually, uh, yeah, took a space and routed, you know, routed out our own sign and had it bolted there on the wall and ran it as a separate operation. Were there actually people working in there? Yeah. No, no, we had uh, Joe Keenan. Um, we ended up uh, with like, I don't know, there were like 30 or 40 of us. Uh, they were actually there. They were managed to the Atari at the time. Nolan had done it. But there's some of shortly Nolan had replaced all the management of Atari. Some brilliant, innovative idea he ran around to blow up where people were certain well, you replace everybody with new people. He brought us new people. They feel mobile and all over that regime. We just about killed the company. And, and these guys over at Key Games are saying, gee, sorry to see you go, but we're doing fine. <laughs> and and uh, Ron Gordon came back to Golden when I put some problems into the subject here. Very good. And uh, uh, Ron Gordon came in and, and burst the companies. And that's the show in his adult supervision, you know, and, and Steve ran into it. So all of a sudden the track came back up. But then the driving game from Grass Valley was the key to got his problem. So one philosophical thing, I think, you love seeing somebody like they were the person, Nolan was the person. Nolan is a person, he's not a perfect person. The one thing that happened at Atari was the counterbalances that sort of filled in at the right time, the right place. The fact that Joe Keenan was practical, the fact that Bill White was cheap with the money, the fact that Ron Gordon could do finance stuff, Akeem Lippin could sell ice to Eskimos. We won't talk about other things, but he could sell. But, uh, you know, you get to the right place where the, the people's uh, plus things help and your deficiencies, of which we've all got, were like covered by other people. Or I'm also lucky. You know, <laughs> Not to minimize that. That um, there were so many times that we came within literally days of money. The rush to the bank to cash your check.